we are in the heart of Kuala Lumpur at KLCC Park and in this episode we're gonna do a $20 challenge. This is 95 ringgit and we're gonna show you how long this is gonna stretch us. This is not including accommodation but we show you some options down the line. And I'm saying we, we're not doing this alone today, we're doing this with Nuna! Hey. Whoa. <laughs> Jeff. Are you excited? Yay! $20 is gonna last long, you think? You've been here already for a little while? We can do a lot. Let's do a lot. <laughs> Let's go! This park is in the middle of Kuala Lumpur. The city is quite busy, but coming here, there's not much noise from the city. You hear one engine on the background, one motorbike that is stepping on the gas. A little bit of construction here and there, some hammering. But you also hear the fountains, the birds. The size of this park is about 50 acres and it's got a few man-made lakes, a lot of grass, it's kept clean. There are a lot of places to sit in the shade and people make use of this as well. It is quite a busy park. It is two o'clock and yeah, people are out and about chilling in the shade or playing at the water. There are a few options for children as well. This city is a very child-friendly city. And while I'm saying it's child-friendly, it is, it is indeed. But you have to be careful because these ones, I don't see in Europe, at least not in the north of Europe. It's very sharp. You don't want your kid to hit this tree. A palm tree with sharp thorns. You don't see that every day. So you have to be careful of this. But other than that, this park is beautiful. It's nice, it's clean. It's got nice hills. It's got a little bridge there. And we take you slowly through this park because then again, it's a $20 challenge. And $20, yeah, it's not a lot, but we can do a lot with this. And not everything you have to pay for. Like this, it's also a free thing to do. And this is my favorite part of this park, because you have a good view on the Twin Towers and on Surya KLCC. This is a shopping center we went about six months ago. It was actually quite an impressive mall. But also the fountain show is quite nice. During the evening, I think at eight o'clock and nine o'clock, there will be music and a light show. It's quite impressive. The shopping mall itself is uh, it's just a shopping mall, but it's built in 1996. So you cannot expect a lot. And then coming in there, they renovated it or they renovated every now and then. And it is actually quite a nice shopping mall as well to visit. Kuala Lumpur is a developing city and guys you can see also in the background there are buildings popping up. Last time we visited Kuala Lumpur this building behind us was not even nearly half finished. Now it's getting there, it's coming close. The city is growing rapidly and in several episodes we try to find out if this is actually a good holiday destination and perhaps a place where you may like to live. We are here for another month at least in Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. I'm gonna travel around a little bit to show you different parts of Malaysia but Mainly we're focusing on Kuala Lumpur. Not only tourists are here at the park, no, there's also a lot of locals here. There is a running track all around the park. There's also a facility to drink. There's some drinking water taps. And just in case of emergency, there are all poles around where you can push the emergency button. The security guards are also working here at this park. You don't really see them around, but there are a lot of cameras where they can keep an eye out for um, uh, pickpockets and these kind of things. It's not happening a lot here in this park anyway. But just in case there are, yeah, there are cameras installed and you've got a, quite a safe environment here. You can see that building that I was talking about. We can have a closer look now. And seriously, I think when we come back here in about four or five months time, if we do so, if you like us to come back here, then we probably see this building finished. You know, they're popping out like mushrooms here in Kuala Lumpur. This is going to be a beauty add on the skyline of Kuala Lumpur. There are QR codes scattered around on trees and you can scan the QR code. It gives you some information how tall the tree is, what kind of tree it is. There are public toilets here available as well. I'm not going to lie, it's not super, super clean maybe, but it's clean enough. Got normal toilets. I'm saying normal toilets. I mean, like the European style, maybe I can say. And uh, yeah. Doesn't really smell, it smells like a public toilet, but it doesn't matter where you are. Maybe in Switzerland it's different, but if you go to the Netherlands to a public toilet, 
probably, you know, you recognize the smell. Uh, nothing different here. There are premium toilets available in the Surya KLCC. This is a shopping mall. It's only like two ringgit. And then you have like a classy toilet with fancy hand soap, etc. But yeah, just in case you really need to, it's also possible to just go to the toilet here. Because it's really hot, we grabbed a taxi via the Grab app. It's only 14 ringgit to our next destination. Thank you, sir. This way, okay, thank you. We expected to have a free entrance, but lately they changed this free entrance to 40 ringgit charge. For locals, it's also a little bit cheaper, so it's only 10 ringgit to get in for our local viewers. Anyway, it fits in our budget. The gent pointed us through this gate. Let me go check out the forest eco park. And you can hear already the forest, the crickets. A little map there. And straight away, I have to mention that, you know, the park that we went just there, that was a man-made park. But Kuala Lumpur used to be all rainforest. And they keep this rainforest, this little space in the middle of the city, untouched basically. We take you for a canopy walk. You hear the traffic from here, but we go deep in the jungles of Kuala Lumpur Forest Park. We go up this tower, going around. On the stairs, Luna is already going ahead. Not too sure how high it is. I guess about 15 meters. <laughs> you do hear a lot of traffic, though it's pretty cool that they created a safe zone for the jungle. Half of this 25 acres is actually lush jungle. So the other half is paths and bridges and other things, signs on trees, but yeah, you can hear the jungle. Nuna is a little bit afraid of heights, so I reckon she rocks at the moment. She's doing a pretty cool job. Feeling okay? Yeah. Yep. The sun is coming through. It's super hot. It's 33 degrees, but it's quite humid. This was free, ladies and gentlemen. A few years ago, this was free. And we expected it to be free and spending a lot of money on food and drinks and show you that, um, yeah, you know, it's quite easy to get around for 20 US dollars per day. We're still gonna show you that it is, but 40 ringgit is quite a big cut of our budget. Oh, wow, we can keep on going. <laughs> Are you comfortable? Huh? You okay? No, just go. She's actually holding the camera for me. Such a legend, such a hero. But we can crack on this this uh, tree walk, I would say. I did not expect that. You can see pictures, you know, online. Such a hero. You can see pictures online. And there's only one picture of, you know, with trees in the background. And I thought it was just one, one bridge, one suspension bridge. But no, there are quite a few. It's a walk. It's a walk, yeah, I didn't know. It's not a cakewalk, though. Beautiful flora and fauna. You hear the birds, the crickets, the jungle is alive. And we are right next to the KL Tower. A beautiful iconic building that you probably know if you know Malaysia. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, let's crack on. It's a hot day, a beautiful day in paradise. Let's go. So Nuna basically is trying to get me to marry her. <laughs> she hates me for this, saying this to you. But I obviously want to marry to her, but I need to find the right moment and the right place. And the right place is probably going to be somewhere in Southeast Asia, but I wonder where. Um, this could be somewhere in Malaysia. I'm half Indonesian, so it might be somewhere in Indonesia. And we are based and Ilona's family or Nuna's family is from Thailand. So yeah, probably going to be one of those three countries. But I'm not too sure yet. And I would love to know what you think. The perfect proposal location somewhere in Southeast Asia. Wow. Getting a bit thirsty. Nuna, you wanna get a drink? Oh yes, please. <laughs> okay, let's get a drink. Huh? 
Wow! See, we are in the jungle of Kuala Lumpur. And we crack on and we just passed another entrance. And we got two bottles of water for four ringgit. So we have to mention that we're still doing the 20 dollar challenge here in KL. And now we entering the calmer part of the jungle. Before COVID, this park was free, but since 2020, they enforced the entrance charge and fair enough because, you know, it is government owned, right? So they could just get away with not charging anything at all, but this park needs maintenance and that's cost money. Also, this is the, this is really like center center, this, the, the right in the heart of Kuala Lumpur. So, the government also could decide to destroy this piece of forest if they really, really push through. I don't know if it's actually really legally possible, but uh, or at least so quick anyway. But they choose to maintain this piece of forest right in the heart of KL. So I don't think it is unfair to charge even, you know, 40 ringgit is quite a bit for a forest. It's time for coffee and Nuna found a little place, a special place where we can get coffee out of a wall. Uh, without talking. <laughs> without talking even, yes. I think this uh, started in COVID times, I'm not too sure actually. You want to go for a latte? Yeah. We have to hit the gong. How many times? Oh, four times. Okay. Career, <laughs> career success. Hello. Can we get... Uh, these ones, ice please. 28 ringgit for two lattes out of a mysterious wall. I think it's ready. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Monster. That's it. Oh, we got some straws as well. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Having a cold beverage here at Jambu. This is in KLCC. We drove here by taxi. We actually spent another eight ringgit, or six ringgit including tip, eight ringgit to get here. But from here we're going by foot, all the way down, explore Chinatown, we go to Central Market, we're gonna buy a souvenir, we're gonna have some lunch. After a quick coffee, we're just gonna show you around this area. It's a beautiful part of the city. We've got the Chinese, Portuguese, Chino looking buildings across the street. Beautiful architecture, but also nice wall paintings. The city center is definitely a busy place, but doing everything by foot, I think that's the best choice we have because, you know, from getting from A to B, other than you have to cross the road sometimes, it is quicker, especially if you just do a short distance. This is one of the places in Kuala Lumpur which I really like because this is basically summing up for me, eh? personally, Kuala Lumpur. You got the old architecture, the new architecture right there at the very back. And you can see that the city is spacious, it's open, it is green, there is a mosque. There is a lot of water, there's a, a lot of water management because it is raining a lot during rain season. Talk about street art. This is also a place where you can admire the beauty of it. And on our way here, we actually bumped into two gentlemen. They are painting all over Kuala Lumpur, showing some artwork. That's the, the least I can do. And this is a, a special place. They made this area of this town of Kuala Lumpur so much more beautiful than it already is. And to give you the whole Kuala Lumpur experience, we have <laughs> the sound of the air conditioning units, but also the sound of the mosque.
no matter what kind of religion you have I think this is something magical it is already quite nice coming inside hitting the air conditioning and I've noticed that there have been some changes already in the last year or so because this is new this is like a little supermarket we're not going in there we're here for a souvenir because we still have some budget left there is a food court upstairs but this is a new court they call it the Makan Hall until the 29th of February there is an expedition here on the first floor at Central Market it's showing you the timeline of the market but also some information about the city itself I think this one nice. Yeah, the way this one, nail cutter, five ringgit only. Okay, well, I will take this one. Se seven, seven ringgit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow, so we have a little souvenir for now, our Thai auntie. And it's just a silly little thing. We don't have a lot of budget left, and I still want to give you a food experience. We got a little cup. I don't think she's gonna use it, but this way she knows we think about her. Now it's my favorite time of the day. It is lunchtime. It is also the hardest moment of the day. You have to choose between all the food that they have. They have Chinese, Western Chinese, Chinese food. Chinese. Okay, let's go. Well, we are in Chinatown at the moment walking about. How about chicken on rice? We ordered some water and chicken rice. The water costs us three ringgit, but we only buy one bottle because I'd like to take you also to a little place where we can have a drink. But before we do that, I just show you three different price categories, options to stay for an overnight in Kuala Lumpur. Just to give you a rough idea what prices you have to look at when you're visiting Kuala Lumpur. For 20 US dollars, you can get already a room with private bathroom. Mind you, they most likely don't have any windows and they can be quite dirty. For 50 US dollars, you can get a spacious apartment with city view, clean and central. And for less than 100 dollars, you can already enjoy five-star luxury in the heart of KL. It was actually not nine ringgit per dish. No, he charged us eight. So that leaves us with 10 ringgit 50 cent. We take you now out for a drink in Kuala Lumpur. It's okay we film? Okay, okay. okay can't. Uh, what's your name? Uh, huh? What's your name? May. May. Oh, my name Chai. Chai. Chai and Nuna. Uh, what do you have? You have you have uh, uh, some uh, some daily fresh fruit yeah. juice, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. Guava. guava. You have guava? guava. Yes, please. Yeah, guava. Can we have one guava and one mango? mango? This is what is happening all the time when we are going around Kuala Lumpur all these places different places in there having small businesses you can just sit down have a drink it doesn't have to be expensive there are many fancy places and i actually wanted to show you or we want to show you a few of them as well but because we went to that eco forest park and had to pay a 40 ringgit we had to adjust a few things here a little juice in the middle of chinatown mm. it's healthy we asked the lady to not put any sugar in because normally normally they add a little bit of sugar automatically but this is just a healthy mango shake and a healthy guava shake juice juice shake juice, shake, juice. The delicious in the heart of Kuala Lumpur we still have a few ringgit left but because there are quite a few homeless people in Kuala Lumpur we give the rest of the money it's only a little bit to someone that needs it a little bit more than we do. It is quite easy to get around with $20. Then again, we didn't include accommodation. Accommodation, yeah, it's up to you, but you're gonna spend at least $10, $12, but then you're really on the budget end. Yeah, $20 challenge. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Did you actually, Nuna? I did. What was the most fun bit of today? Well, good company, good food, 
healthy juices. If you know someone that is into Malaysia, into Southeast Asia, please share this video to one of your mates or your family members. Thank you all for watching till the very end. We would like to say from the heart of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, bye for now and stay, stay champ! champ.